we thank you. We thank you yet once again for allowing us to be in your house on this morning. God, today we don't take it for granted. We thank you for the breath of life. God, we thank you for keeping us. Now, Father, the, we pray that, that, that you would open up our spiritual ears and let us hear. God, let us hear what thus says the word of the Lord on this morning. We pray for Pastor Bridges. We pray that you would anoint him afresh. God, stand up in him. And allow him to stand flat-footed and, and preach with your holy boldness. What thus says the Lord. And Father, we pray, oh Lord, that you would continue to prune us. And allow us, oh God, to line up with your word and with your will. In Jesus' name. We say thank you, we love you, and we appreciate you. Meet the needs in the house on this morning. God, I know that you know each and every one. Meet, meet the needs today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God and our Father, we bless you, we praise you, and we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, we thank you for your kindness to us. We thank you for continuing to keep us. We thank you, God, for being real in our life experience, for being the God who keeps us, for being the God who watches over us, for being the God who preserves us, for being the God who protects us. Thank you for being the God who provides for our every need. Father, now I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would open our hearts, that you would open our minds, open our ears. Bless our hands and our feet to do what the word declares. I pray that you would speak in this house today, O oh God. And let your anointing be strong in this place. The anointing that destroys yokes. The anointing that releases people from bondage. The anointing that lifts and empowers people to fulfill the kingdom assignment for which you have called them. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for the saturation of your presence and your spirit in this place, in this house. Say the Lord rebuke you and all of your imps and all of your powers and every design and distraction that you would seek to bring against the people of God to hinder the word today. We come against you by the authority of Jesus Christ and render your power null and of no effect in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you speak to your people today by the power of your word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm chapter 40. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 40. The new living translation. Glory to you. patiently for the Lord to help me and he turned to me and he heard my cry he lifted me out of the pit of despair he waited patiently for the Lord to help me and he turned to me and heard my cry and he lifted me out of the pit of despair 
we have been preached just for a couple moments this morning. Neighbor, Neighbor. I've got a praise, got a praise. From, the from the pit. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We know that God's word is blessed. And it is my prayer that your mind be informed by the truth of the word. Your soul be conformed by the will of his word. So that your life can be transformed by the application of his word. Now, just to pause for the cause, I know it's been a minute since we've been together here in Muncie, Indiana, the Church of the Living God, but I want to make sure that it's not just what I've taught, but what you have caught and received from what I have said. So to make sure that we're on the same page and that we're tracking, that we're following one another, I'll say, get it. You say, God, it will be good. Get it? God, it will be good. Good. All right. Verse number one of the song I remember from childhood Back on Jefferson Street, there was an evangelist, Mother Sonos, who would stand and sing during devotional service these words. She would say, my heart was distressed neath Jehovah's dread frown, and low in the pit where my sins dragged me down, I cried to the Lord from the deep ivory clay, who tenderly brought me out to golden day. Then all the saints would join together and they would sing, He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of his praises. Hallelujah. And this song reminds us that he told us that he would hold us. That he would deliver us and that he would bring us out of the lowest places in our lives to the highest points of triumph. And once upon a time, you know, um, this song reminded me in a dark place that God holds on to us during the good and the bad days. And that praising God stirs our hearts up to joy so that we can walk in hope, feel the assurance of who God is. And there's a reminder that God isn't done with us yet. And though things may look grim right now, they may look muddy right now, they may be sticky right now, his truth and word will hold us until eternity. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of his praises. Hallelujah. Reminds me of a story that once there was a time told of a week lazy young man he was a servant and he didn't try excelling but he was just he was just tired of his situation and his circumstances not that he wasn't a good young man but he was just tired and he just wasn't able to he worked under a farmer who would give him work laboriously the slave kind of work which no one of any age was able to perform or properly complete and obviously, the farmer wasn't happy with the young boy. One day, while the young boy was cleaning the farm, he was throwing garbage into a well. And the young man somehow slipped, and he fell into the well. And after trying everything to get out, the young man started crying. He started yelling for help, and after several hours, he realized that nobody was coming. But finally, the old man, who was the master, he noticed thought in his mind, that's perfect. One less problem for me to deal with. He could just bury the young man in the well and get over his useless servant. Quickly, he called the villagers together and he asked them to help him to fill a well that was no longer working. Unknowingly, the young man was beneath. But quite obediently, the villagers started throwing dirt and helpless, dejected and aware of his approaching end, the young man started crying again. And this time rather loudly, but the master told them, ignore the cries, they're only echoes from the garbage and the dirt that's plugging the well. 
Slowly the sound became faint with time and after a while there was just dead silence accompanied by the sound of dirt hitting the ground. Thinking that the young man was finally dead, the master leaned on the well to check. But to his utter surprise, the young man wasn't dead. He wasn't even crying. Instead, he was fighting back. The servant was using the bed of dirt as a platform to climb back up. And instead of the dirt burying him, he was shaking off the dirt. He was packing it down and creating a platform for himself to rise again. Now what happened to the young man after this incident that is not what's important. What's important is that, well, we all can relate to this young man fighting and struggling for his life. We relate to him because we are constantly in a position where we are undermined. Constantly in a position where people throw things at us. And in life we all crave respect, dignity, and love. And in our fight and howsoever it happens, we get stuck in deep places and pits. But this young man teaches us to fight back and not to give up. This young man teaches them, let them throw dirt. Because if you think that the world is throwing dirt at you, then you aren't paying attention. Every difficulty that the world presents is an opportunity for you to rise. <laughs> Every time they delay your success, they make your story more interesting. Criticisms and struggles just improve us. What counts is our perseverance. Someone said this, success is momentary happiness, but failure is learning. But perseverance is the best feeling ever. How true is that? What's better than the feeling that you will not give up? You ought to nudge somebody close to you, tell them don't give up, don't give up. The feeling that no matter what you will move on, the feeling that nothing can stop you from pursuing what you want, the proof that you want it so bad that there can only be a delay, but no deadlock. In other words, your pit has a purpose. The writer of the psalm says that he delivered me and he lifted me. I waited patiently for the Lord and he turned to me and heard my cry. And he lifted me out of a pit of despair. Your pit has a purpose. Can we have testimony service? We only got a couple minutes left to be here this morning. Can we have another testimony service? I don't think I'm going to get very far in terms of this message, you know. Um, but if we could have a little bit of testimony service to continue. You know your pit has the power, although it is a dark place, although it is a dirty place, it has the potential to help develop you. It's dark, it's dirty, but it's developing. Testimony service. Come here, Joseph. The last position his family put him in was a pit. But when he was lifted out of the pit, he ended up in Potiphar's house. When he ended up in Potiphar's house, he ended up in prison. When he went from prison, he went to the palace. And then ended up being the second in charge all over Egypt. But it all started with a pit. Oh, you're not the only one who wants to testify this morning, Brother Joseph. Brother Daniel, oh, it's good to see you this morning. They threw you into a lion's den with hungry lions, and you thought you were going to be torn apart and ripped apart with their razor-sharp teeth. But you prayed to the God of your salvation, and when they came back in the morning, not only were you delivered from the lion's den, but every one of your enemies who spoke against you was devoured by the thing that they tried to destroy you with. It was in a pit. Oh. Come here, Jonah. You want to testify too? Oh, you tried to run from God. You thought your legs were long enough that you could escape his judgment. You thought your legs were long enough that you could get away from his word. You thought your legs were long enough to run from God. All right. All right. And you found yourself in the pit of a big fish. But out of the pit of the big fish, you cry to the Lord, and the pit of the big fish, he threw you.
you up into the place where God wanted you to be. What you made up for lost time in the pit. All I'm trying to tell you today, people of God, is that your pit has a purpose. Well, we got 30 seconds. And church is supposed to be over. Can I tell you today what happened to the young boy? What happened to the young boy at the end of this story is that he not only came out of the pit, but the story of the young man fighting for his life spread like wildfire. And a classy gentleman from a noble house actually came and bought him from his master. He set him free and he started giving him clever work and awesome food. And the young man began to develop. And all the time, it was because of the dirt that people were throwing on him. In the pit that he was able to come up. Evangelist Saunders, God rest her soul, but verse number two, she was seen. He placed me up on the strong rock by his side. My steps were established, and here I'll abide. No danger of falling while here I remain, but stand by his grace until the crown I gain. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of his praises. Hallelujah. Praise God for the pit. Because it's in the pit that you're developed. It's in the pit that you're delivered. It's in the pit that you come to recognize who God is. Praise God, even from the place of your pit. We are the church of the living.